All right, guys, welcome to probably my most requested video of all time based on people who know me actually, not like any of my YouTube subscribers. But people who know me have always asked me this story because a few months back, as you guys might or might not know, me and Junior got arrested in Mexico and we're gonna tell that story right now. It sucked. It it's sucked. a horrible memory. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to recap this or relive it, but we gotta tell you guys. So we gotta tell you guys uh, how we got arrested in Mexico, why we got arrested, how everything went down. It's a really, really funny story. <laughs> it's a little bit long, guys, but you gotta hear it. It's really, really funny. So uh, let's just start off, I guess. It's, the almost, the day. Uh, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah, me and Junior were in California at the time, and we were in LA that day. And just like any other day in LA, you just do like the normal touristy stuff that people do. We went to Venice Beach. So we're all chilling at Venice Beach. And by the way, guys, for this story, I'm choosing to use just mine and Junior's names, and I'm gonna blur everything else out. We'll just tell the story as if it's just me and Junior, but we were with a group of people. But imagine it's just me and Junior, even though we're with a group of people, but we're gonna do it just <laughs> me and Junior, all right? So uh, we're in Venice Beach just doing random touristy stuff, you know, going around, checking out sites, smoking weed, you know, that Cali Kush, all that good shit. We're doing it, uh, whatever, same old thing, same any day in LA. And then we just were like, let's go to San Diego for the night or something like that. We got a hotel there. Yeah, so yeah, we went and traveled down two hours to go to San Diego and spend the night there. Thinking the clubs were sick. Yeah, we're thinking it's like, you know, we've been to LA, we've been to like other parts of California, let's just go check out San Diego. Thinking like the club scenes are gonna be crazy popping. So um, we went and it just really wasn't for me. It was just like a lot yeah. of like, I do give it to upscale. Omnia. Omnia had a sick that yeah, smoke had, like, show was cool dope. smoke show, but it was like that really was cool. upscale and like I felt out of place. I wasn't wearing like a, a dress shirt yeah, and it was like, like, like business it's casual for clubbing. business casual clubbing. I don't like that scene at all. It's not really my thing. I like to just go out, mess around with my friends, have fun. I don't like to act like I'm prissy or really high end. That's not my scene. I don't like that. So right away we were not in the mood and we tried a couple different bars and by now it's like two AM and one it's of the guys we were with just pitched the idea, I think. Yeah, so like we just finished the club. Who did it? Oh, I don't one remember. One of the guys, like one of the guys for sure. Yeah, right? one of the guys is like I've been to like Tijuana, Mexico. It's like literally half an hour away, and it's way yeah. better than this. We had no idea. We were like our hotel was like here, and the, and the border was like you could walk. our backyard. That like, you could walk. Like um, that's when I actually first got my drone, and I remember that day they wouldn't even let me like I tried to fly in the parking lot and I got all these messages like you're way too close to like the border or whatever. It's a <laughs> restricted airspace. That normal shit you get when you try to fly. And I had bought this camera equipment too that I'm using now. I spent like a lot of money on camera stuff and you guys gotta remember that because it's an important detail later on in the story. So it's about three in the morning and we're like, me and you don't know any, me and Junior don't know anything about Mexico. We've never Nothing. been, I've never been, he's never been. We've never been to Tijuana. We just know what people say on the news. It could be dangerous for people or whatever it is. So we go like, oh yeah, we asked the, the front <laughs> desk lady. Oh man. So uh, we go to the front desk lady of the hotel and we ask her like, hey, do you think it's a good idea for me and uh, a few friends to go to Tijuana right now? Pretty sure she's from Mexico herself. And she just straight up looked at us and she's like, yeah. absolutely not. Yeah, there like, was no hesitation. Like, she just didn't even like, didn't even no. say for what reason or what he, no, just she was like, no, just stay no. here. It's three <laughs> in the morning, bad things happen after 2 a.m. Everybody knows that. Don't do it. Yeah, facts. No, we even asked her like another question too. Like we asked her if we should go and then she's like, no, absolutely not. And then she's like, we're like, should we go like with a whole bunch of people or something or drive over? And she's like, just don't even bother yeah, going. Yeah, so like, just don't, don't go. Just like, don't go. You're not gonna. You're in, you're in San Diego, just chill here, do your thing. But you know, we don't and listen. Initially, I think one of us like even said like, yeah, let's not go. Yeah, and yeah, the other one of us no, was, was like, no, let's go. It was both of us kind of. It was like, we were taking turns. It was like, no, nah, it's a bad idea. And they're like, no, nah, it's a good idea. And like, I just got my camera equipment, we'll vlog. Yeah. Da, da, da. So finally we agree that we're gonna go and we're gonna take the van that we were renting um, across the border with us, just so like we're not walking in the streets of Mexico, right? Where we don't know where the fuck we're going. I didn't even know you could cross borders on feet like that. Like, just I was, cross. Can I cuss on the thing? Yeah, go ahead. I, I was being such a little bitch. Like we, like normally when we would go out, I would bring like a good amount of money to spend, like and have more than excess amount. But like we brought like, help, bro. We I brought like a hundred, hundred each. Like a hundred, hundred each. Took off my jewelry and everything. Yeah, like. I brought my passport. And the camera in my pocket, I wore like sweatpants, like the <laughs> ugliest t-shirt ever. So hopefully people think I'm like broke or Just something, broke or kidnapped or whatever. It's not people, worth the rob, yeah. People say happens in Mexico. <laughs> so now we're in Tijuana, guys, and we don't know, it's not like we, we know we're like, we're locals. It's like King Street in Toronto, we'll go to like Cabana, Rebel, fucking those places, no, know the clubs. Yeah. We don't know where the hell we're going. So we drive off the highway 
and it did circles like yeah we did like the a same lot loop, highway we, loop. I, I thought like, we were gonna get pulled over and people were, <laughs> you guys are definitely smuggling drugs or something because yeah. we drove around the border like area like five times yeah we didn't know how to get out of this like loop for whatever reason like everything was in spanish oh man fuck but then we like pulled up and there was like this popping like literally like we're doing like this loop and all we had to do was like take the left exit and, and right just, at the edge of the exit was like this massive bumping nightclub massive massive nightclub and like I remember walking up to the gate, the doors, and like we give the dude our IDs, he grabs our passports, and he's like, Canadians, wow, haven't seen that one in a while. Bro, there were, the guy the that guys was, had the fucking, guns, bro, yeah. they had the guns. We got like men in black over here with yeah. fucking laser blasters at the door. Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah not no small like, gun, bro. Yeah, he's like, like a, a big gun. Thing. So like we went through the, the security of the nightclub, like with the guys with the guns, and like it's like a, a metal detector that you walk, like it was like an airport TSA like inspection. But like me and another guy like have our weed pens. And mine just like looks like a normal pen, so he didn't bug it. But the other guy's like is clearly like marijuana, so he takes it. And the Spanish guy like doesn't speak English and he doesn't know what the fuck it is. And he's like, <laughs> like looking at it in all these different ways. And we're like, we're fucked already. We didn't even get inside the club yet. <laughs> Do you want a fucking Mexico? Yo, this is literally the hangover. This was, I think, like the best part of the story, at least for me, was we go up to the bar and we see people with bottle service and stuff, and we go, "How much is it for a bottle service?" Like that bottle of Absolute that they had there. Buddy literally goes like this. <laughs> Looks at the price tag. It's like twelve ninety nine. He's like, "That's it." I'm like, "All right, sick." We're popping bottles now for like 20 bucks in Tijuana. So now at this point, we're like, this is the, everyone was lying to us. Hotel lady was capping. Yeah. This is the best place on earth. You pop bottles for 20 bucks. I'm here every every night. But then we meet uh, another gentleman who I name I'm not gonna use. So we meet this gentleman who says that he loves to party in Tijuana. He's like, guys, you guys are American or Canadian or whatever. I can tell you guys are not from here. You guys have come to the greatest place on earth. I need to take you guys to the strip clubs. So now I don't know, I'm freaking out at this point. Everybody's like drunk and they're like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's get this random guy in our van and let him take us into fucking strip clubs in Mexico. I'm like, are you fucking nuts? Yeah, are you guys listening to yourselves right now? We're gonna let a random guy direct us where to go in a foreign country? Yeah. Fuck no. Well, but guess what? It worked out, but I was all for it because like there was this like really badass Latina chick and she was like staring at me and I was kind of about it, but I didn't know how to speak Spanish. And then this guy came over and he's like, oh, I know where she work. And I'm like, I need to go there. I don't care how we're getting there, but I need to go there. So yeah, lo and behold, uh, we let him in their van and he actually takes us to the most bumping place on planet Earth. Imagine every Instagram girl you follow, they're replicas in a room, walking around in lingerie. This was the best Fire. fucking strip club I've ever seen. It's a movie. There's like 150 girls that are hotter than any girl I've ever seen. So right away we're like, okay, this Sick. guy's legit. Tijuana is, again, the best place on fucking earth. A few of the guys that we were with wanted to get some drugs. I'm not gonna say what kind, but wanted to get some drugs. And uh, they were able to do so off the security guards or whatever. The guy even gave him instructions. Like, cause we're in Mexico and we are clearly foreigners. Like we do, we're not from Mexico. So he like, he gives him the money, gives him the drugs or whatever. And the guy like literally looks at him. He says, don't like only like, I'll hold it when you need it. Like to use it, ask me and I'll give it to you, but give it right back. And the guy like just never did that. So he kept it on him the whole time. That and they're, plays later. They're warning us they're like you do all the drugs you want in the strip club yeah. because your customers, they won't really bother you. But the second you go outside, it's, they're gonna fuck you up. Yeah. Like cops are gonna be on you right away because you just stand out like a sore thumb. Like you guys are tourists, like right there. Like yeah. people are gonna stop you right away. So we go do our thing in the strip club. We have a good night. And then now it's like probably like six in the morning, five in the morning. And we're like, yo, it's time to go home. Like. It's getting fucking early, not even late. It's getting early. Early. And we gotta cross back and whatever. So me and Junior are the only sober ones, but at the same time we do not have licenses. So we brought our passports because we weren't planning on driving. Well, it was like it was a whole mess because like we were in the club for like whatever, like however long, and then like everyone kind of went. It's like that point in time like everyone kind of got private dances. So and my phone's not working. His wasn't working because we're in like another country and I didn't have that data plan. So like. I leave and I don't know where the fuck anybody is, so I walk outside, still can't find anybody, and I stumble across one of the guys. Then we like stumble across everybody, so like eventually we rounded up everybody, and it's like 10 in the morning now. Hey, what do you wanna? No, we're safe now. It's not dark anymore. We're, we're part until the sunlight like, comes up, so we're Overall not experience, it's not the greatest place on earth. So like we started walking towards the van, and like this cop literally just like watches us go. 
We get in the van, pull out, watch us go. But we just have our passports, Junior's driving, and we get pulled over. He knew it was coming, we knew it was coming. And at this point, guys, I'm telling the dudes that we're with, hey guys, I know you were doing drugs, Give them to me, I'll swallow them, whatever the fuck it is. I am not going to Mexican fucking jail. Give me whatever drugs you have right now. And yeah. their response is, we do not have anything on us, bro. You don't gotta worry about it. Just deal with the cop. So the cop's a little pissed off at first that we don't have licenses, which is understandable. You're driving a car with all your driver's license on you. His reason for pulling us over, so like we're driving like a van and are the windows tinted in the back? Yeah. Okay, They're so tinted and it kind of does look like a drug van. Right. It's just like a, it's like a white van that you rent. Yeah. Like he pulled us yeah. over and like obviously I'm driving, so I was like, you know, like why did you pull us over? And he goes, uh, I don't know if you have girls or guns and drugs in the car. And I'm like, oh fuck, you know, like. Here we go, like, you know damn well we're about to get searched to the T. So that's why he, like, before we got pulled over, he's like, yo, you know, like, this is about to happen. It's gonna like, happen, I already knew. I've watched enough of Locked Up Abroad <laughs> where you fucking know that these foreign customs guys know what the fuck tourists go there to do. Yeah. If, <laughs> <laughs> if the drug was that cheap, guys, that I'm saying that the price that these guys bought it for, I'm not surprised that people fucking smuggle drugs. Right. I didn't fucking know that drug smugglers be doing this shit, but it makes sense to me now. Those fucking TV shows make fucking sense. <laughs> so we get pulled over, and then, like, he pulls me out of the van because I don't have a license. Like, now we're definitely not getting out of it. So I don't have a license, and everybody's been drinking. So he pulls me out, searches me, I have nothing on him. And then that gave him, like, some reasoning to, like, now search every single individual in the van. So like he searched like Hughes, nothing. Searched the next guy, nothing. Searched another guy, but the the one of the guys put shit, the drugs in his wallet and put like, the wallet just somewhere else. So in his wallet. We like, all had the wallets on us, obviously, because that's where you fucking have your wallet. So the cop found, you know, searches us, wallet, da da da. But then this guy doesn't have his wallet, so he's like, oh okay, like where's your wallet? Searches the van, finds his fucking wallet, pulls out a bag of drugs, and like right there and then, like My your whole mood is just. Like, I just pictured my mom like tossing it. her sandal from fucking Toronto and it hitting me in the side of my head oh. all the way in Mexico Bro. and boomeranging back <laughs> <laughs> again two two more three more five more six more times. Jesus Christ! My, my parents would have killed me because my parents specifically said, "Do not." They know me and and juniors just like me. We're I'm we just do stupid shit that comes to our mind. So like a trip across the border in the middle of the night sounds like a really good idea for content. And look what we have content yeah. but at the same time it's fucking dumb as hell yeah so i don't know we got searched and he literally and, and you have to keep in mind like they don't speak perfect english so it's like it's even more frustrating that we can't get our point across yeah, and, and i'm freaking panicking at this point yeah so, so the bot the guy goes listen if he's your friend and you don't want him to go to jail you go to the your atm and pull 500 dollars american and give it to us and we'll skip the court trials. We won't flag your van, so that means you'll be able to get back across the border with it, unless if, if it was flagged, it'd be stuck in Mexico as Yo, like a screwed. used for smuggling yeah. vehicle, basically is what it would say at the border, and we'd be fucked, we'd be screwed. Bro. It wasn't our van, but still, we wouldn't have any way back in or any way back to the fucking border. We'd be walking the streets of Mexico. W when this little five foot one Mexican cop found the bag of drugs, he lit up like a Christmas tree. Like, yeah. He opened the wallet and just kind of like pulled it out Gave us it wasn't a lot of drugs. It was not a lot like, of. It wasn't a lot of drugs, anyways. But it, <laughs> no, it was it like the matter. smallest little bag. But he We're knows tourists. that he's yeah, fucking yeah, like yeah, he's about to just screw us for the like most amount like of money. He's like he just like won the lottery. Yeah, he just like looked at us and he's like, all right, I've got these kids. So then he asked us for how much? Five hundred. Five hundred. Sent me. Sent me like to the ATM. Like we have five hundred dollars after we just left the strip club. He made you stay because you were driving. Yeah. So he's got these two like pinned on the car. Sends me and my buddy by ourselves. I could have ran away. By ourselves. Bro, if you ran away, I'd be so cheap. Yeah, but where would I run? Where the <laughs> fuck would I run? I don't know where to run. So he sends up by ourselves to the fucking ATM. We go to the ATM. I'm trying to pull five hundred dollars out for this guy. I'm in Tijuana, Mexico. I didn't tell my bank I'm going to Tijuana, Mexico. It just keeps saying decline, decline, yeah, decline. Not They're not gonna let me pull five hundred bucks from the ATM in the no middle way. of Mexico. No They're way. like, it's gonna it's fraudulent. It's they, fraud, yeah, sure. it's fraud for sure. They're not allowing it. I'm like, we're fucked. On my way back, another two cops. Pin me on their car. Where's your ID? Where's your ID? They're not understanding my English. I'm trying to tell them, I can't deal with you guys when I'm getting arrested over there. Over I'm there. fucking getting arrested over there. You can't arrest me over here. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm fucking stuck. Yo, that's so funny. <laughs> that sucks. So, yeah, we're fucking getting arrested here. Arrested over there. I don't know what the fuck's going on. These guys kind of like, after a while, cue in on what's going on. They start laughing. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, go back to those guys that have you first. They're like, kind of like, fuck it. They got him first kind yeah. of deal. So go back. I'm like, you know what? Sorry, boss. We can't, like, 
I can't there's give no you, I, there's no money. I can't put money. I have sixty dollars on me. That's all I had. Sixty bucks. The other guys were queen out of money. Junior was queen out of money. We didn't bring a lot because we didn't know where the hell we're going. You're not gonna carry tons of cash right. to a foreign country you've never been to for like a three, four hour night. Right. Anyways, I have sixty bucks on me, and I tell him I have sixty dollars, sir. Like. That's the best I can do. I don't want to get in trouble for something I did not fucking do. That's what I hate. I own up to all my fucking mistakes, but when it's not my mistake, I'm not going to fucking take the blame for it, or get in trouble for it. So we're talking nicely. He goes, what do you have in the van? Now, I am not ready to give away. Like I said earlier, do you guys remember? I bought a lot. I bought like maybe four grand worth of camera equipment that day. I am not ready to give even one. I'm not even ready to give my battery. Nothing. My SD card. Nothing. It's mine. I worked my ass off for that money so I can make do this channel and do these videos. I'm not fucking giving anybody that equipment. That is my equipment. So I hide that motherfucker, like the camera in my pocket. I'm fucking sweating. It's a two thousand dollar camera, it's in my pocket. I'm not gonna let this guy see it whatsoever. He starts like another search of the van, but this time not for drugs, for like goods. Yeah. So they end up finding uh Beats headphones, a Nintendo Switch and my 60 bucks. That's like the three items that they have a value. The rest of my stuff was in my camera bag, so they didn't really think of it. It's just like a back, it looks like a backpack. I'll show you guys right now. This looks like a regular travel bag, little one. So they didn't really think to look into it. Thank fucking God, because I would have been fucked. What would I say? Like, you can't have it. I'm going to go to jail instead. I would have been stuck. I probably would have said that, honestly. Yeah. I just bought it that day. I was not losing it. So yeah, they found what, Switch? They found Beats the, headphones. The, the, the Nintendo Switch, Beat headphones, and your sixty dollars. And he didn't know what it was at first. Like we had to tell him, like yeah. for kids. So he's like, he's like, oh, I'll take it and give it to my kids. Like that's no, he, he didn't even do that. Remember, he was like, so he he takes the Nintendo Switch, and we're like, you can have that. And then he goes, no, I don't want this thing. It's not worth any money. He goes, I'll take the Beats headphones instead and the cash. He takes the Beats headphones. And oh yeah, the cash, he already had And it. when we agreed to it, he goes. And the Nintendo yeah, go, this guy And we're like, so you motherfucker, yeah. you are good. You fucking tricky bastard. Quick. So, yeah. Basically, the Nintendo Switch wasn't mine. It wasn't Junior's. It was the guy who actually got arrested. So, that made everything... Or the guy who got caught. One of the guys who got caught. It was his Nintendo Switch. So, it made everything okay with me and Junior. We didn't care about it. The Beats headphones were mine. Just the 60 bucks was mine. But I don't care. 60 bucks or jail. I'm going to take fucking oh, jail. Every, I'm getting 60 bucks. Every, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take 60 bucks as the... the buy out every single time I'm not trying to go to jail I'm not trying to have my parents find out I went to jail they would have beat my ass Dude. so bad yeah it's and crazy cause like if he got caught and the cop was like yeah I'm just gonna keep him you guys can go I'd have been like Dude, yeah, I, I fucking hate this guy. Yeah, like, but if it was him, then I'd be like, you know, like, okay. I yeah, guess, like, like, if it was Junior, I'd be like, here, take my money. fucking camera. Quick. But this guy, if they, yeah. if there was, if we could have left after, I would have left his ass in jail. Like, no cell phone, nothing, bro. Like, yo, Even good fucking luck to you. Telling bro. this story has me stressed because I remember that moment. Like, now it's been almost like it's been a long time since it happened, like months. Yeah, months. So like, I'm cooled down about it. But like a month after it, I was like still in complete fucking shock. Not just because of that. Like I said, guys, this story continues on for like two more days. So. This three days just completely fucked my life to like a new fucking level. Yeah, it's so much bad but luck. That's basically the story of how we traded a Nintendo Switch to get out of Mexican jail. Yeah. It wasn't our fault. I think it's a really funny story. For those of you that wanted to hear it, there you go. I hope it's up to your liking and you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button, message me, comment, tell me you want to see the continuation of it. And uh, me and Junior will continue it because it was. There's fucked. more. There's a lot more. It doesn't have anything to do with cops. It just. Uh, like, I don't even want to spoil it, but it's just a string of the worst, worst, worst look I've ever had. Yeah, you um, gotta hit the thumbs up button, because like, I want to tell you guys what, that's the part of YouTube, we're gonna try and make you guys do it, because it's hilarious. And we're just shooting this video pretty quick, guys, it's in a hotel right now, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. From Arizona. Sure you, we're in Arizona like, right actually now. the sickest place on earth. Cave Creek in Scottsdale. We're coming, we baby. just have to move here. <laughs> I, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you guys leave a like. It is probably one of the funniest stories that's ever happened to me. Um, yeah. Well, can't say I learned from my lessons because I went back to Tijuana. Yeah, this, guy, this guy went like a fucking week ago and he's trying to make me go again. We're going. Yeah, we're, not going. Going. we're not fucking going. <laughs>